Good day, students. In this clip, we're going to be going over two examples on how to identify, graph, and factor a perfect square trinomial. The instructions are as follows. Uh, for each polynomial expression, test to see if it is a perfect square trinomial or not. Find the roots, x coordinate of the vertex and y intercept. And then with that, make a table, graph the function, and label completely. Okay, so um, these are the instructions for the examples we're going to be doing. All right, so for problem number one, we have the polynomial function y equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. So the question is, is this a perfect square trinomial? That's what the A part asks us to verify. All right, so we know that the perfect square trinomial is of the form a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared, right? And that factors into uh, a plus or minus b quantity squared. So the question is, is this expression of this form? In order to determine it, what we'll do is ask ourselves the question, is 2 times the square root of the first term times the square root of the last term, is it equal to the middle term? If this is true, then it's in fact a perfect square trinomial. All right, so let's simplify the left side completely and see if we have a true statement. So we have 2 times the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. Is 2 times x times 3 equal to 6x. 2 times 3 is 6. Is 6x equal to 6x? Absolutely. So it checks out. We have a perfect square trinomial. Okay? All right, so the B part, we're going to find the roots. Since it is a perfect square trinomial, um, we can use a factoring trick to determine what the roots are. I mean, to factor it. Okay, so let's set it up. To find the roots, we set it equal to 0x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0. Now, to factor a perfect square trinomial, we can just take the square root of the first term and the last term and bring down the middle sign. Okay, so that yields x plus 3 quantity squared equals 0. To find the roots, we just isolate um, x. So first thing we'll do is get rid of the square and then the positive 3. Okay, so to get rid of the square, root both sides, since the opposite of square is square root. So you root both sides and then you have um, x plus 3. Since you took the square root of a square, you have to add plus or minus 0. Okay? Now since 0 has no orientation, x plus 3 is simply equal to 0. And next, you subtract 3 from both sides, and that yields x equals negative 3. All right, so these are your roots. We have a, a double root situation here. Both of your roots are identical, and they are both um, x equals 3, okay? All right, next thing we need to find is a vertex. To find the vertex, we have to use the formula x of the vertex equals negative b over 2a. In this problem, b is the coefficient of x, which is 6, and a is the coefficient of x squared, which is 1, okay? So we're going to plug in these two values into this expression, and we're going to have um, negative 6 over 2 times 1. To simplify that, we'll have negative 6 over 2, which equals negative 3. You notice that the roots and the x coordinate of the vertex are the same, that's the case here because the roots, um, both of them are on the vertex. That's why we're having an identical output. All right, and then last thing we need to find is the y-intercept. The y-intercept um, is simply the value of c in the um, standard form of the equation of the polynomial. So what is c here? c is 9. As you can see, c is 9. So the y-intercept... Um, is equal to 9. Okay, now we have all the information we need to generate the graph of our uh, polynomial function, which is a perfect square trinomial. So let's go ahead and do this, the C part, uh, which is to graph. Okay, part C, graph. Okay, now let's look at where our vertex is. The vertex is negative 3 and our y-intercept is 9. So our vertex is on the left side, quadrant 2, actually on the x-axis in quadrant 2. So let's uh, set it up like this. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so let's uh, label our coordinate systems. This is Y and this is X. Let's calibrate one, two, three, four, five, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten. So this point right here is going to be our Y intercept. Okay. Our vertex, which also happens to be where our double roots lie, is negative three. So one, two, three. So there goes your double root right there. Okay. All right. So we're going to draw the graph, but we have only two points. We need at least one more point. So let's draw our axis of symmetry through the vertex. The axis of symmetry always goes through the vertex. Okay. So now all we just do is reflect the y intercept onto the other side. So this is you go one, two, three to the right. You go one, two, three to the left. And that gives you the, another point that defines your um, hyper, your parabolic curve. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw the, the graph. It's just a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. So something like this through that point. And then just reflect it the other way. You go like this through that point. Okay. All right. So after uh, graphing your parabola, you're expected to label completely. Okay, so let's label it. This point right here, which is a double root, um, is the vertex. Um, what is the coordinates of the vertex is negative 3 comma 0 and it's also the roots When you have a double root situation the vertex fall on the roots, okay? This point right here is your y-intercept Which is equal to 9 and this line is your axis of symmetry axis of symmetry And the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. So let's indicate that axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. All right, so there you have it. All right, let's take a look at uh, question number 2. We're going to be doing exactly the same thing. Uh, so in this case, we have the polynomial function y equals 4x squared plus 9x plus 1. Okay, all right, so is this a perfect square trinomial? So let's go ahead and do the test. That's what the A part is all about. So part A, let's do the test. Um, if this is a perfect square trinomial, um, if you double the square root of the first term and the last term, you should get the middle term, all right? So the question is, is two times the square root of the first term times the square root of the last term equal the middle term, which is 9x? So is this the case? All right, let's simplify it and see um, if this is correct. All right, so, okay, actually, I made a mistake here. Let me fix the problem. This is supposed to be 4x, it's not 9x. Let's see, or else that would have worked. So let's make, let's make the middle term 4x. So 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. So is that equal 4x? Okay, that's more like it. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify and see if we uh, have a, a, a perfect square trinomial. So let's simplify this. 2 times the square root of 4x squared is 2x, and the square root of 1 is just 1. So is this equal to 4x? That's the question. So if you multiply this, you get uh, 4x times 1. Is that equal to 4x? Absolutely. So it passes the test. We have a perfect square trinomial. Okay. Now next thing we want to do is we want to find uh, the roots, um, the y-intercept and also the x-coordinate of the vertex. All right, so let's start out by finding the roots. So to find the roots, I will set the quadratic equation equal to zero. So now since this is a perfect square trinomial, we can use a factoring trick to factor this. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take the square root of the first term and the last term and bring down the middle sign. So we're gonna have two x plus one quantity square equals zero. Okay, so let's solve this for x. To do that, we'll get rid of the square first and uh, subtract 1 and divide by 2, okay? So let's do this step by step. Square root first, root both sides, and that yields 2x plus 1. Square root of, if you take the square root of a square, you have to add plus or minus 0. But since 0 has no orientation, we're going to have 2x plus 1 equals 0. Now, two-step process to isolate x, subtract 1 from both sides first. 2x equals negative 1, and then divide both sides by 2. And your 
your roots is x equals negative one half. You have a double root situation, they both fall on negative one half, okay? All right, how about your uh, vertex, the x coordinates of your vertex? In order to compute that, we're going to use the formula x coordinates of your vertex equals negative b over 2a. In this problem, b is um, 4 and a is 4 also. Okay? So let's input these two values into our formula to get the x coordinates of our vertex. So it's going to be negative 4 over 2 times 4. Okay, and I reduce this into will simplify it into negative 4 over 8. And then if you divide the top and bottom by 4, you end up with negative 1 over 2. Okay, so there goes the x coordinate of your vertex. All right, how about our y-intercept? Y-intercept. Well, to find our y-intercept, we just look for the value of c in the standard form of the equation of the polynomial. Okay, so in this standard form, the value of c is 1, so the y-intercept is basically equal to 1. All right, now we have all the information that we need to generate the graph of our of our function, okay, of our perfect square trinomial. All right, so part C is to graph. Okay, we're going to graph graph the function. Okay, let's see. Our y, inter our double roots, which is also the vertex, is a negative one-half, which is on the left side of the x-axis, and our y-intercept is 1. So let's create our coordinate system. Since we're going by one half, we're going to calibrate our x-axis um, accordingly, okay? So since uh, we have one half here, I'm going to let two tick marks be one, so it's easy for me to graph my one half, okay? So this is negative one. And then um, for my y-axis, let's just keep it consistent. Follow the same pattern. This is one, and this is two, and that's three. This is your y-axis, and this is your x-axis, okay? Let's go ahead and uh, label our coordinate system and calibrate it. All right, so first thing we're going to graph is the, um, we're going to graph the the, ver the roots, or the, and which is the vertex also. Negative one half is right here, okay? So there goes the roots. Both of them are on the same dot, and this is also the vertex. Uh, the y-intercept is one. It's right there. We need one more point to define our parabola. So to do that, I'm going to draw the axis of symmetry. And then we're going to explain the symmetric nature of this graph to generate the other another point, OK? Now, since this is the axis of symmetry through the vertex, um, and this point goes one unit to the, uh, a half a unit to the right, the next point must go half a unit to the left, like that. OK, so these three points define my uh, parabola, OK? So this is just a sketch. If you want to make it more accurate, you can include more points. All right, so let's go ahead and sketch the parabola. It looks something like this through that point and goes up. And the other one goes through this point and goes up. All right, let's label um, our, our graph. This point right here is the vertex. So it's um, negative 1 half comma 0. And this also happens to be a root, okay? Um, the y-intercept is right here. Y-intercept is a positive 1. And this line is your um, axis of symmetry. Let's go ahead and label that axis of symmetry. And the equation of our axis of symmetry is x equals the x coordinate of your vertex, which is negative one half. All right, so there you have it. All right, so how well did you understand this example? So what I'd like you to do, uh, try this problem, try this, just to see if you've mastered the whole um, pr procedure. Um, for the same. I want you to use the same instructions to try number three. Number three, we have the quadratic function y equals x squared minus 10x plus 25. And feel free to post your solutions to part A, B, and C. Uh, a and B, you can't really grab in the uh, comment section. So just give me the solutions to A and B in the comment section below this video here. And um, so I can know if you uh, understood the process or not. Okay, and if you had any, have any complications, uh, figuring this out, just uh, post the comments to let me know.
Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking here so you can get updates to other cool uh, videos such as this. And also post a comment to indicate what your solutions to the problem uh, were. And also to let me know what you think about this presentation. More clips come to FinalMatt.serve.com. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day.